Hello, I'm Mark Price. I'd like to talk to you today about light and salt. There was a fella, a really old looking guy, who was on his front porch rocking back and forth, back and forth, and, and an older woman comes by and looks at him and says to him, my word, what is the secret to long life? And this fella on the rocking chair said, well, he says, I smoke every day, many packs. I drink every day, alcohol, most all day long. I eat nothing but junk food. I don't exercise. And the woman was amazed. She said, wow, wow, how old are you? He smiled and said, 26. <laughs> there you go. The gospel today is from Matthew 5, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set up on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. So there you have it. Jesus is saying in this uh, teaching he's giving us today from, again, the Sermon on the Mount, uh, that uh, we are called to be light to the world and, and, and salt to the world. We're called to, to be that which is a bright spot in the world and that which enhances the world. And we're called to be these things to all who God puts in our life, all around us. And just the nature of us being that bright spot or that enhancer points to God. It is God who is giving us the strength to do these things and to be that bright spot, to be that enhancer to the world. We're living in a very dark time in our world. Um, in a broad sense, in a general sense, we've gone from being a Judeo-Christian society uh, Fulton Sheen, Bishop Fulton Sheen said back in the 70s, Christendom is dead. He didn't say Christianity was dead, he said Christendom is dead, meaning the concept of, of being in a country that is a Christian or God-fearing country is, 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 get, is dead. And he said that back in the 70s, and it's only gotten worse since then. We're living in a world that is anti-God, anti-Christ, and the, the only saving grace are people of faith who live in the world. Now, the world's been through these cycles before where it's turned from God, and, and yet the people of faith, just by the nature of their faith, the strength of their faith, uh, were an example, were a light to the world, were the salt to the earth, and just the nature of who they were turned things back around and got us back on the right track. And it's gonna happen again, but just as it did before, it's gonna take people of faith who are willing to be strong and stand strong and stand tall and be that light up on, a, uh, on the, on the lampstand and not hidden under a bushel blanket or a bushel basket. We have to be people who are willing to be seen and to be counted as people of faith. This is what we're called to do. Now, in the churches today, the churches haven't helped with this movement toward secular humanism in the sense that there's been all kinds of scandals there have been, uh, in our, my, my, my other Christian faiths, brothers and sisters, there have been plenty of preachers who have preached one way on Sunday and lived another way on Monday, and that hypocrisy has been, been blasted all over the news because that's what the world does. It looks for chinks, especially in people of faith, and, and, and really exploits it. But in my own church, with our own scandal that we had, the sex scandal in the church, which many believe, and I believe, was... was um, was actually handled rather anemically and quite frankly rather slowly but people still came to church many left but many still were sitting there in those pews saying and knowing in their heart that there are bad people in the world there are bad people in the church but there are many more good ones so i believe that the that the people the parishioners who kept coming to church and sitting in those pews in spite of the scandal and kept their focus on god where it should be those people 
are light to the world and those people are salt to the earth. Those people are examples to all of us of what we're to do when we're caught in the middle of bad situations. Many clergy, many religious who um, during that time were certainly embarrassed by it, still did not hide away. They went out into the public. I had a friend who at the time of the scandal had already been retired for many years and had stopped wearing his clerics, his collar. But when the scandal hit, he started putting that collar on and going out into public a lot more, saying, I'm a priest, I'm proud to be a priest, there's many more good ones of us than there are bad ones. And he was a, a light to the world, he was salt to the earth. The clergy and the religious who have been doing that uh, all around the world, in spite of the scandal, are the ones who have moved us past the scandal. They are the, the light to the world, they are the salt to the earth. But we're called to do this during the pandemic, very dark time. Are you at home? Are you the one who's doom and gloom? Or are you the, the bright spot trying to encourage those around you, your family, your friends, the, in, in, um, in looking for some kind of a bright spot at the, in, the, in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic? Are you the salt of the earth? Are you the enhancer of the world around you? This is what we're called to do in today's gospel to be that light, to be that salt for the world around us and then point to God, acknowledge that I am able to do this, I am able to be that light, that salt, because of the strength that God puts in me as a result of my faith. I'm going to end today's with a poem, and I think it was written by a woman named Lois Blanchard Eads, and the poem is called, If He Came to Your House, because you see, for us to be that light, to be that salt, we have to live as people of faith on a day-to-day -day basis, not just periodically or not just when the cameras are on. How are we living our life day-to-day? -day? Do we want to live for the world or do we want to live for God? So if he came to your house, when he saw him coming, would you meet him at the door with arms outstretched in welcome to your heavenly visitor? Or would you have to change your clothes before you let him in? or hide your magazines and put the Bible where it had been? Would you hide your worldly music and put some hymn books out? Could you let Jesus walk right in, or would you have to rush about? And I wonder if the Savior spent a day or two with you, would you go right on doing the things you always do? Would you go right on saying the things you always say? Would life for you continue as it does from day to day? Would you take Jesus everywhere you plan to go? Or would you maybe change your plans for a day or so? Would you be glad to have him meet your very closest friends? Or would you hope that they'd stay away at least until his visit ends? Would you be glad to have him stay forever on and on? Or would you sigh in great relief when he at last was gone. It might be interesting to know the things that you would do if Jesus came in person to spend some time with you. We are called to be salt and light. We are called to be a bright spot in this otherwise dismal world, and we're called to be a person who enhances the environment, the world around us. We do that when we acknowledge that we are light and we are salt because God is in our lives, because we are people of faith. Let's live our life on a daily basis, acknowledging that we are called to be that light, that bright spot, and we're called to be salt, the enhancer of the world. Amen? This is Mark Price. Thanks for listening.